If you've ever heard the song My Name Is by Eminem, Can It All Be Simple by the Wu-Tang Clan, or Streets Is Watching by Jay-Z, you've likely heard the instrumentation of Lobby Cifre and had it stuck in your head. This is because his songs are sampled on hits like all throughout the years, especially since like the 2000s. If you don't know what sampling is, interesting. Put it simply, it's when you cut up portions of old songs and put it in new songs, you know, repurposing them. How I discovered Sifre was hearing his voice on I Wonder by Kanye West. The song used by Ye here is is, is a masterpiece. The, the repurposing is really good, I like the song, but what Lavi did is one of my favorite songs of all time. What's up, Eric, by the way? That's Prince. He's hanging out with me right now. He'll probably leave by the time I'm done. Labby Sifre is my song, and I would even encourage you to just go listen to it right now. Labby Sifre, same way it's spelled in the title of this video. My song, off of that album right there. Crying, crying, lo l laughing, loving, lying. I think I got that right. I did, crying, laughing, loving, lying. Great album. I would even encourage you to pause and listen to it and get back to this video. But you better get back to this video. It's almost hard to put into words how like perfect that composition is, honestly. Uh, something about the like soft and simple, almost melancholic piano, the way it like dances with the drums. It's 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 perfect. And that's just like the instrumental what truly stands out is lobby's vocals they're real they feel the space of the instruments like perfectly beautiful soulfully he's got this sensitive voice cifre is a writer before anything as i'll get into in a little bit whenever i talk about his life he's taken like long hiatuses from music but he'll never stop writing and he shouldn't the lyrics of my song are emotional, authentic, and truly convey Lobby's struggle to express his identity. There's two parts at the end of each verse where he starts it with, and I wonder, like the part that's used in the Kanye song. The first one is good and I love it and like it sounds perfect and, and, and the line's great and it's good that Kanye used it. You know, uh, I wonder if you know what it means to find your dreams come true. But the other I wonder lyric that Kanye didn't actually use. Since someone could make me cry. And I wonder if you know what it means. Tears go by. To tell the story of Labi Sufre is to tell the story of a gay black poet. Shout out Pride Month. His story starts in 1945 Hammersmith, London. Uh, he was born into a working class mixed heritage. His father is a Nigerian lawyer and his mom was of Barbadian and Belgian descent. Queen Sufre, love mom. She made it like a point not to be like a white passing when she probably could have tried to so, like and in such a time like most people would have no one could blame her if she tried but respect the queen bro from a young age lobby had a self-awareness that he's talked about on a few occasions like despite growing up in the catholic education and being baptized before he could understand what religion is he basically was an atheist probably has something to do with the catholic teachers being assholes he recalled a teacher hitting him with like the classic not another sifri a catholic church school in 40s and 50s london literally sounds like dark hogwarts except mudbloods are black people and dementors are the priest pedos he recalled taking the collection money that his mom gave him and his brother like to give to the church and like he would go to like the cafe with it that's awesome <laughs> i respect that 
And from a young age, he not only knew he was religious, but he also knew he was gay. <laughs> like, even before he could understand, like, sex and sexual orientation, he recalled having a super vivid dream whenever he was little of, like, falling in love with a man and, like, you know, living happily with them. When he was a youngin' dreaming about dudes, he was also learning about music, which we love. His brother put him onto some fire music. He, like, recalls Thelonious Monk, Wes Montgomery, Billie Holiday, Miles Davis, Count Basie. All of these are different artists he's mentioned, which, like, yeah, you can tell he was formed by them. Like, you can feel it and hear it in, in the music, for sure. I could do videos about, like, all of them. I, I adore all of the, the artists I just named as well. By the time he was 20, he found the love of his life, uh, Peter Lloyd. And after a handful of years playing jazz for a three-man house band at Ann Ross's Jazz Club as a jazz guitarist, Lobby debuted his self-titled album, and it's magnificent. Very consistent throughout. Some songs I'd recommend from it, Too Late, uh, I don't know what happened to the kids today. Uh, also, make my day gorgeous, and ask me to say off the deluxe. I had to add something off the deluxe. And then he dropped the singer in the song, which I haven't spent a lot of time with. I could do a, like some videos breaking down some other of his albums in the future. I'm just gonna give you know some basic stuff here. And then in 1972, he dropped. Crying, Laughing, Loving, Lying, a just perfect project I introduced earlier. That's the one that has my song on it. Besides my song, I would recommend Canic Chase, To Find Love, and the title track. After this masterclass, he dropped three more albums, including this one, which you probably heard some bits and pieces of, and this one with a awesome cover. Then Lobby entered a self-imposed retirement in 1975 to focus on his poems. Like I said, he's a writer. Always, he's a singer, usually. But also, I think a part of the reason he decided to retire, which he's touched on in some interviews and documentaries like that, is the fact he never was really mainstream. Like, he had some hits throughout, throughout those albums I just talked to you about, but he never, like, was consistently charting and he didn't he didn't have super mainstream buzz i mean probably because he was black and gay in 1970 but he always knew that his music would be more important later and he he always trusted that good music was going to be good music forever and it i mean he was right and then if we fast forward over to 1988 Labby was watching a compilation of videos from South Africa during the apartheid movement, and he wrote something, a bit of a fight song that brought him out of retirement. Ultimately, it became the battle cry of the whole anti-apartheid protest around the world. When this song came out, it came out at the right time we needed a song like that to do for us what it says in the song, to make us stronger to give us pride, to make us taller than the walls that they build. It's about people gaining inner strength. After this successful return to music, Lobby made four more albums in 10 years until his partner Peter Lloyd had a stroke in 1997, leaving him half paralyzed. Lobby cared for him and stayed along his side alone until he met Rudolph Bardwick. And he really says it best. I went looking for love, but it was only when I met Rudd that we became three and I stopped looking entirely. For nearly 16 years, the three of us lived in a menage a trois, and I realized I'd made the family that I'd been trying to make for my whole life. After those 16 years together, Peter Lloyd passed away in July of 2013 after nearly 50 years with Lobby. Two years, six months, and 28 days later, Rudd Bardwick died. Both of his partners gone in two years, six months, and 28 days. It's really hard to imagine, for sure. Having a life centered around love 
and discovering love, understanding love, pursuing love, just to have it and lose it all. I mean, it's like, it's like nurturing a garden, like nurturing a perfect garden that you, that's, that's your life is, is your garden. And then it just gets burned down. In the last 20 years or so, Lobby's music career has been mostly off his hands. Besides a compilation in the 2000s, the last songs by Lobby in 2006, a few singles in the past couple years, and another compilation that just so happened to drop like a couple weeks before writing this video. Lobby has not been using music for his expression to the public as of late. I say music because I mean, he has a Twitter, he posts a lot of thoughts on there, and he still writes poetry. If you want me to check some of the poetry out and give some commentary around his poems, uh, let me know in the comments. In 2022, Lobby appeared in the docuseries Imagine by the BBC. He talked hesitantly, yet honestly, about coming out with new music sometime soon. If you get the opportunity to watch that documentary, would very much recommend. It's not available in the US, I just have ties to the Brits and BBC. <laughs> Lobby Sifri is an all-time musical talent, one of the greatest love philosophers of all time. He's made timeless music, he has timeless lyrics, he has a timeless mind. He's a timeless man too, look at him, like, oh my god, black don't crack king, oh. I'm a fan of celebrating people while they're alive. His art has made me cry, laugh, love, think, I just hope I inspired you to enjoy it, at least a little. If you want to keep up to date with Lobby, you should check out his Twitter, like I said, at Lobby Cifre. If you want to keep up to date with me, you should check out the Instagram at Eric Ty Ellison, Fire Post. I also update about like anything I'm really up to, any projects or whatever. Also write about sports, in particular Green Bay Packers football for the NFC North Report. If you want to check that out or anything else, check the description. I got like everything down there, trust me. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you can get something dope out of it. Once again, anything you need, link in the description. Uh, you know, subscribe, comment. You don't gotta like, I don't really care that much about the like. Just subscribe because I'm gonna make fire videos and comment because you got something to say. I know you got something to say. <laughs> Peace.